know it's a couple days before New Year's, but I want to be one of the first to wish you a merry, happy New Year. <laughs> and uh, get a little bit of Christmas in there with Mary. But anyway, I just want to want to say Happy New Year to each one of you Amen. and everything. Mm. Well, when I've been studying, I've had a thoughts been going through me for about two weeks on this message, and when I get through it, it's been split into a couple messages, so uh, y'all be blessed. I'm not going to give you the whole bale of hay today, so, uh, gonna, <laughs> you know, it's just like the, the farmer came one time in his bad weather, sleet and snow to church, and, and he was the only one there, and he came up to and the preacher says, well, I don't care if it's one or 10,000, I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach what I'm supposed to preach. And so anyway, he uh, he preached and he kept going on and on and on. And this old farmer, he just uh, was kind of tired, and, you know, just kind of wore out. And he walked up to the pastor when he said amen and had the altar call, you know, altar call one person. The guy was the deacon anyway, the old farmer, and, and he, he'd been saved for years, but Pastor was just going to go have the altar call anyway. So anyway, he just went on about his business and uh, had a complete service for just him and that that old <coughs> farmer, you know. And the farmer came up to him and he says, Pastor, that was a good sermon and everything, but you know, when, when I only have one cow gets up there, I don't feel in the whole bale of hay, you know. I don't give part of it. <laughs> So anyway, so that's the way sometimes we feel that, you know, we just have to do and do and do. Well, some of the things that I've been talking about this, this week and last Wednesday night also, it says, brethren, in Philippians 3.13, it says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things, which are behind, and reaching forth into the things that which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. And this year, that is what we need to do, is kind of press forth the high calling of what God has called us to do. We have to realize that we are all called, and, you know, and our calling is... With, without repentance. I mean, it is, it's always there. God calls you. He doesn't change it. It's always there for you. So with us, we need to realize God has called us for a work that he called us before we were ever formed in our mother's womb to be able to do. But we also need to understand that this week, and I've kind of been writing things down and even sharing them on Facebook, is that we, it says in the scripture that Paul was writing, but this one thing I do, forgetting those that are which behind. Now, there are three, three or four statements I've, I've said this week to people and, and on my writings I've, I've done. And it, one of them was, don't let negatives of the past set the tone of the beginning of the new year. So otherwise, do not let negatives, the things that have happened last year, yes. that were your negatives, to set the tone of what you're expecting for the new year. Yes. Don't let it. Don't. We need to change our tone or need to change our song because he is going to give us a new song. Yes. Next one I've said is don't let a bad day be the judge how you the rest of the year will be. Too many times in our life is that we see just one bad thing ha happens and it sets the mood for the rest of the day, the rest of the week, and sometimes the rest of the month and the year. And so we have to realize that we're going to come up with a new year that's coming, a new beginning. But do not let whatever happens in one day set the tone or set it how you're going to judge what is going to happen. Nah, nah. Because most things are momentary afflictions. 
They're only just for a moment. They're only for a day. And we have to realize that. The next thing that we need, that the Lord had put on my heart this week, physically, you can't go back and relive the past. So don't let the past keep you from living today. Too many people let their past judge how they're going to do the rest of their life. The past is in control. we got to realize what the past is past. There's nothing that you can do about it. Now, if you have unforgiveness, that you can ask for forgiveness and for the unforgiveness and forgive others. Now, that's what the only thing you can really do in, about the past is ask for forgiveness and also to forgive others. So this is the thing. We cannot let the things of the past and we cannot keep reliving the past mm, 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 to keep you from living today. Yes. Sometimes even the things that we've had good things in the past, and people say, I wish it was like the old times. And they said, I wish the way it used to be. Well, you keep getting into this wishing of things what they used to be that you forget that you're living today. Mm, now, Years ago, no. I have can be honorary and sometimes when I preach. I don't know if you know that, and I can say some things that are different. Well, I uh, I went to a revival, and I was supposed to <laughs> preach, and they told me to get there at. It started at seven thirty. Well, the time everybody arrived and everything, and they sang. It was way after 9 o'clock before I even got to preach. But my arniness, I went up and uh, I went up and uh, pulled a chair up, and I sat down in this chair. And I had a bag in front of me. And in this bag, I reached into this bag, and I reached in and I pulled out a chicken leg that wasn't cooked. And I says, hmm, I know y'all been here so long. It's nine o'clock, it's after nine o'clock, and I'm hungry, but I can't eat this chicken leg. It's not cooked. So I put the chicken leg back in the bag, and I reach in there, and I pull out a chicken leg, that all the meat was off the bone. It was just a bone, a, a drumstick bone, just, just nothing on there, just some gristle. And I says, well, I can't eat this. So I put it back in the bag. And then I walked in, and I pulled in, and it was a good old crispy drumstick. And I says, y'all waited, kept me waiting so long to preach. I'm hungry. And, you know, I'm going to just have to eat. You know, I just, you know, I don't want to get weak up here and I'm going to eat. So I took that chicken leg and I took a bite up and said, mmm, 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 that chicken really tastes good. And I walked, I was walking around and this little boy sitting on the front row and I walked up to him and I says, you want a bite? And he said, yeah. I said, no, this is mine. And I, and I ate the chicken. And I set it down. And I said to myself, I said, uh, I, you know, I told him, I said, you know, there's too many people are just like these chicken legs. Mm, that we have to understand that some people are looking at the chicken leg that is not cooked and they're looking for blessings to receive them that are in the future mm, and they nah. keep looking to the future nah. and then there's some people that are looking in the past nah. and looking at their blessings in the past like the chicken leg that's already been eaten and wanting the things to relieve it lay that meal. and then there's other people that you are wanting to live just like this little boy here, wanted to live off 
other people's blessings. Mm. So what is keeping you from doing mm. is that we have to realize Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory. And he wants to bless us Glory. today. Yes. We can look to the future, but that has not happened yet. We can look at the past, and that hasn't happened yet. And we can look right now. God wants to bless us today. So this goes along with the thing. Physically, we cannot live the past, and we cannot live the future. So we have to understand that that we cannot. The, same, the future's more unseen. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. But we know that we can live today and look for the blessings that are right before us. One of the other things I talked about, forgetting things in the past, is that we don't don't let don't take fears that immobilize and inhibit you from moving forward in the new year. Things that you have fear of, do not let them keep you from moving forward into nah, the new nah. year. Mm -hmm. nah. Do not take your fears and your anxieties and those concerns that were just bogged you down yes. into the new year. Yes. Now, Isaiah 64, 4 says, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, neither have the eye seen, or God beside thee, what he has prepared for them that waited for him. Praise God. So God mm -hmm. is wanting, he has a plan, he has a purpose, he has benefits, that are waiting for us. We have not seen them. We have not heard them. But they are there if we wait for him to deliver them to us. So we have to understand this. Now I want to share something from Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, starting in verse 8. Now we have to understand this is... Right is after the Israelites have already seen the miracles of God that brought them out of Egypt, saw that where they just saw the miracle where all the Pharaoh's troops were destroyed in the Red Sea and everything, and they were getting ready to go into the promised land. Well, we are getting in ready to go into a new year. We're getting ready to go into new promises and new direction that God has given us. He is getting us ready for this. But I want to read this to you in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 8. It says, Therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that be strong and go in and possess the land, whether you go to possess it. So otherwise... What he is saying, that I've got a new thing that I'm going to do into your life for this coming year. I've got a new thing, but you have to be willing yes. and keep my commandments and love me. Mm -hmm. Love me with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Oh. You need to keep my commandments, which encompasses all the commandments when we do that. Oh. So we have to understand... If we're ready to possess it, we need to be strong in the Lord, and the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. So we need to pray for the joy of the Lord just to come Amen. over us. Amen. So we have to understand that there are things that God has for us and benefits that he has for us for us to possess in this new year. Yes. So as we go forth, it says, verse 9, and that we may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swear unto the fathers to give them and to their seed the land that flows with milk and honey. Right, How many of us ready for mm -hmm. new things to happen? How many of us are ready to have prosperity in our mm -hmm. life? How many of us ready to have prosperity yes. in our bodies? Thank you, How many God, of yes. us want prosperity in our relationships? Yes. How many of us want that milk and honey in everything that we do? So we go 
that we keep those commandments and if we keep our focus on him. So he has, that seed is already planted for the new year for us that we will be able to do, but we got to trust in him completely. And Deuteronomy 11.10 says, For the land where thou goest in to possess it is not as the land of Egypt from which you came out. He is telling us what we're going into a new year. We're going into something brand new, and it's not going to be like the year of the past. It's not going to be like the years before us. That we're not going to be in Egypt anymore. That we are that we were held in bondage. That we were held in slavery. That we were held in things that kept us down. We are not going to be held in by the circumstances that were in the past. We're going to be able to go forward. That we're going to be able to possess it. It says, for hence then yes. you will come out where thou sowest the seed... And waters it thy foot as the garden herb. See, in, it said in Egypt you had to work for it. You had to work for your seed. Mm -hmm. You sowed that seed. You had to work for it. You had to water it. That's the bondage that it had you in Egypt. That everything that you produced before was because of the sweat of your brow. Because you had to do everything in the physical so we go on in verse 11. But the land, but I like it when he says but, that means something that is going to be better for us. It says but, the land where you go to possess is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh the water of heaven. Otherwise, he is saying that the new year, as we go into the land that we possess, the new life that we're going to live in this next year is going to be blessings that flow from heaven. Mm. Just as the rain that falls and goes back to heaven, it's going to come back to us. It's going to water us. It is not us by our labor, it's but, but the blessings that God is pouring out to us. Praise God. Yes. Now, verse 12, it says, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. And the eyes of the Lord or thy God are always upon it. From the beginning of the year even to the end of the year. This goes back again when we trust God. We trust God in every aspect of our life. In every aspect of our life. That we trust Him. That he's bringing us into a new land that he is going to care for. He is going to provide for us. He is going to show us the way. He has given us the plan. He is the one that's showing us and he's watching and he's caring for us. He is doing something new. Thank you. Verse 13. It shall come to pass if you hearken again. Here's the prerequisite to it. If you hearken diligently, if you hear, attend, listen, and do unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and all your soul. So, when we're entering the new year, he is going to do things for us. There are going to be benefits for us. It's going to be life changing for us. Oh, it's things that are going to be happening for us. That is so much, but it goes back to this part again that you got to love the Lord. And you wonder why that some things are not going away. Is that we're not loving the Lord with all of our heart, mind, and soul. And then we're not <laughs> serving Him. Oh, we're letting other things get in our way. We tend not to worship him. We do not we tend not to praise him. Nah. And then we understand, well, Lord, I need you, but why don't we just get we don't worship him and we don't praise him? And we wonder, said, Lord, how come you're not there? It's because he inhabits his praises of his people. Right. And we have to learn to praise him right. in the good and in the bad. Yes, we Lord. need to put and trust him and to love him. So he is telling us 
that he is bringing us God. to a new thing, a new realm, yes. a new direction, a new plan yes. in the new year. Boy. It says, mm. verse 14, mm. I will give you the rain of your land in its due season. Mm. It not, might be automatically the first day of the new year that this is all going to happen. My. But it's the thing that he is saying, that if you will trust me, and trust me, I will give you in due season yes. when you need it. Yes. When it will be the most beneficial yes. to you. Amen. Sometimes people say, well, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. And sometimes we don't understand that, that to be blessed, we won't be, oh, Lord, help me. Is that mm. we get a blessing, we won't know what to do with it. Because mm, we receive it in maturity, in when it should not, it came too soon. Mm. But we're crying for those blessings and we just don't know how, what to do with it. Nah. And the Lord says, you just wait on me. Yes. Wait on me. Thank you, Lord. And I'll give it to you. Yes. I'll give you the time when you can have the wisdom to know how to use it. Nah. Thank you, Lord. So we see that I'll give you the rain in due season. The first and latter rain. Yes. Yes, thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thy oil. That is all the things. That's your prosperity. That's your prosperity. That's the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That is the anointing. I will give it to you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We see this. And then it says in verse 15. Thank you, Lord. Thou seed... I will send grass in the fields for thy cattle that you may eat and be full. God is a God of provision. Yes. But it all goes back as to how we Thank look you. at it. Yes. Remember Jesus saying yesterday, day, forever. Thank you, we can live in the past, hoping for the past blessings to recome. Wow. Or we can look into the four unforeseen blessings of the future. But he wants us to live today. That's the reason why he tells us to renew our minds daily. Wow. That renew our spirit daily. Because he wants to do something for us every day. Every day. Yes. Thank you. But it goes back how much do I love you, Lord, than what the world has to offer? Mm. How much trust do I have into you, or do I trust the world more? Lord. Well, there are things. Second mm. Corinthians four sixteen says, "For which cause we faint not." But though our outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. Day by day. We're in a new year. But he wants to renew us day by day. We cannot let things of the past or even how people treated us in the past or how the failures in the past or even... The, the things that we prospered in the past affect how we are renewed each day. When we say renewed, what does that renewed mean? It means to make new again. Yes. Every morning is a new day. Yes. Every morning Lord. is made renewed. It's new again and again right, and God. again. So when we wake up, we say, Lord, renew my day. Yes. Make something new today. Mm. Do a new thing in my life today. Now, there are times, and I'm not going to say that you're not going to go through problems this year. Because we will, because Satan is the type that he does not want us to live. Live prospers. He comes to kill, steal, destroy. But God, Jesus came to gave this life. For us, so we can have life and live it more abundantly. Amen. 
Yeah. Second Corinthians 4, 17, for our light affliction, that is but for a moment, worketh us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. Things that we go through, we have to realize they are only momentary. It depends if they're momentary or not. If we trust, love God, Mine. and serve Him, Mine. and renew our mind, and renew our body each day. That, that's the new year. The new year. We are facing a new year. We're facing new beginnings. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we just come to you right now. First of all, we submit ourselves to you. Father, forgive us of our past. Or even forgive us right now of things that are just trying to overload us. That keep us from seeking you with all of our heart and mind and soul. Father, I pray right now that as we begin this new year that we will forget the things of the past and we will keep pressing on to the high calling and the high goal that you have set before us. Father, let our ears and eyes be attentive to hearken to your voice and to your Holy Spirit and that we'll be obedient to follow it. Father, we speak right now that we will look and renew ourselves daily. And Lord, we thank you that you want to do a new thing in us, that you want to do a new thing in our families, that you want to do a new thing in our church family. You want to restore relationships, but it's, when you restore them, it's a new thing and not old things. And Father, we thank you that you're going to renew every part of our aspect of our lives that's in our physical, temporal world, and in our spiritual world. Father, that they are being renewed, they're being refreshed. And Father, we come to praise you. And we come to thank you that you are our God, that you loves us, cares for us. And Father, let that love in us to be returned to you, that we love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, all of our mind. And Father, that we dedicate ourselves to serve you all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our strength. Father, we speak this right now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.